Welcome to the HEAL uh, Community of Practice webinar that we hold each month. Today I'm going to hand it over to Nicole, who represents CCM on the Partnership Board, and then she will introduce the, uh, the project and also the speaker. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you very much, Shaban, and uh, thank you to everyone for being here with us today. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, introduce today uh, the project in North Tour that uh, in Kenya, Northern Kenya, that uh, CCM um, conducted together with uh, uh, three other partners, uh, the uh, Veterinary San Frontier Germany, translating to meaning a private uh, uh, actor, and the uh, Inter-University Department of Regional and Urban Study and Planning of the Politecnico of Turin in Italy. So the, uh, the North Door project uh, is part of the HEAL project. Uh, and uh, today, here with me, there is Elena Christofoi, uh, which will actually uh, present uh, and the, the topic of the discussion today. Elena is a co-founder and chief scientific officer of TRIM, translating to many, is a civil engineer and holds a PhD in environmental protection and risk management. She's an expert in hydrology, applied methodology, meteorology and disaster prevention, and has been working for more than 15 years in the field of disaster risk reduction and people-centered early warning system. With a particular focus, on the participatory design implementation of community-based decision support tools, facilitating the integration of scientific data with traditional and local knowledge. And I might say that uh, this project in North Shore is one of the projects in which Elena and the team really supported this approach. Uh, we are actually uh, reaching the end of the project and uh, I believe that uh, through this approach, uh, uh, TRIM has really helped the consortium to reach excellent results. So before giving the word to Elena and understand better uh, the work that the TRIM has conducted uh, through, through the project, I'd like to just provide you a quick introduction of, uh, uh, of the project in, uh, in North Shore. As I was saying, this is a project uh, uh, that uh, is integrated into the HEAL program. Um, it's funded directly by the Italian Agency for Development Cooperation, but it is also itself funded part of the HEAL program. So let me. The main goal of the project is to contribute to enhance the health and resilience of pastoral community in Marsabit County. Uh, you will see Elena will present quickly also the, the, the map of the area uh, it's in North Kenya. And uh, there is a specific object, the specific objective of the project is really to increase the access to and the coordination of human and animal health services and to reinforce the pastoralist preparedness and response to health threatening events. And of course, all the project is adopting in a one health approach. Through two different, or let's say two different uh, features that really characterize uh, the, the intervention, which is a multidisciplinary approach that brings together different expertise and different disciplines to work together. But also very important in the project is uh, the transdisciplinary approach. So the idea of promoting an open dialogue among experts policymakers and community members to support a mutual learning process. And I might say that really during the project, there has been a lot of this kind of exchange and learning process at different level and among different actors across different disciplines. If we look at the project per se, it is a, a structure in four key components. The first one, is really the coordination of human and animal health services in the development of uh, what we will call also through the HEAL project, the One Health Unit. So the idea is to make sure that very remote, vulnerable pastoral communities in the county receive integrated services, human and animal health services. We are trying to integrate also the environmental component, but it's we are still at the beginning in that sense. 
the second component is the one that you will hear more now with uh, through the presentation uh, by Elena and uh, is uh, the community preparedness to extreme weather events so all these activity done in uh, un, in uh, promoting a, a learning process through the community and with the community we have then an activity focusing particularly on income generating activities through the uh, application of the vicoba the village community banking uh, the project started uh, and built it on the result of uh, a, an operational uh, um, um, research on, uh, on, on assessing the needs of the pastoral communities in, in, in the region. And it came out clearly that economic um, issues and financial issues can, be in, oh, can, can hinder the accessibility to services. So the project tried to address this component. And finally, there is a, a very important component on community awareness and uh, uh, demand creation around uh, uh, the issue of one health per se. Uh, so if we look at the partners directly involved in the project, uh, we are a consortium that can uh, that put together a different type of partners and different type of actors. Uh, so there is actor from the international development that bring uh, knowledge of the context and uh, of the local communities and actors. We are CCM and the VSF Germany. There is uh, a component uh, uh, coming, uh, bringing uh, knowledge and producing solution through the academia. So the, the, uh, the, the partner of the University of Turin is uh, bringing a lot of uh, scientific background and scientific support to the project and then there is stream translating to meaning that is our private actor and that is really bringing efficiency and innovation into the project so without any further delay i'd like to give the word to elena uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning that I'm actually speaking on behalf of Tamara, uh, which is uh, uh, the project manager of, uh, of the intervention. She's based in North Shore, and uh, uh, she, she would have liked to be here with us today, but uh, she, she had some problem with electricity in the field and she could not access uh, uh, a computer and the internet. But uh, I'm sure that, uh, uh, she, that Elena will be able to present the the success of the project and achievement up to date elena the floor is yours wait elena we cannot hear you we can see your presentation but there is no voice i think it's your usual problem with uh, with zoom now? Yes, yeah. Perfect. Okay, sorry, I have a problem with the laptop. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm sharing again. I hope you can see. So thank you, Mikol, for your introduction. And uh, I'm going to uh, my presentation. So what I'm uh, going to present uh, today is the One Health Community-Based Observation Network that uh, was uh, has been implemented into uh, within the one health uh, uh, project uh, before that just uh, um Michael mentioned with we, we are a private partner within the project actually we are uh, an ict company but uh, pretty special actually we have uh, in our team uh, pretty interdisciplinary experts uh, on meteorology, climatology, computer science, geography, but also social sciences. So we have uh, interdisciplinarity within our team. And our aim is to develop tools and methodologies uh, able to transform scientific data, complex scientific data, into meaningful information that can strengthen risk prevention and preparedness, as especially at local level. It's pretty a uh, challenging uh, uh, goal, but this is, uh, uh, let's say, our aim. 
Uh, how we do that uh, through four main uh, steps, let's say. The first one is uh, uh, enhancing risk knowledge through really participatory uh, dialogue with the different actor at the different levels. Mm, we uh, support uh, in the identification of risk indicators. And what is most important, uh, um, it's uh, the, to transform these uh, indicators into measurable, uh, measurable parameters so that they can be monitored and recorded in a systematical way and stored into a database. The data, as you will see, are about weather, climate uh, impacts, hazard, and, uh, and health in this case, but can be uh, really um, concerning many, many risks, let's say. Uh, the third point is related with the data visualization and analysis. Actually, we develop uh, well, we use existing open source systems, we develop other systems that are integrating uh, open source systems for data collection, data visualization, data analysis, uh, particularly adapted to uh, non-technical users. Uh, and final point, which is very much important, once the data are there, you will see several products uh, adapted to several levels are generated and disseminated and, and shared, both in real time and as a historical uh, baseline, let's say. So the One Health project was introduced very well by Mikol, uh, just again to stress on the goal of uh, uh, reinforcing pastoralist pre preparedness and response. As Mikol said, uh, here we have the project area. You can see it's uh, on the northern part of Kenya, Marsabit County, uh, really at the border with, uh, uh, with Ethiopia. So this is more or less the environment uh, there. Um, actually, when we recognize the interrelation with, between a human, animal, and environment, uh, it is essential uh, to um, create platform able to observe, measure, collect, share, and most of all, use the data about weather and the impact. So not just collecting, our goal is not just to reinforce the data collection, but really the data interpretation and the analysis and understanding of the connection between weather, climate, and the impacts on human, uh, animal, and environmental health. Uh, the World uh, Bank, together with World Meteorological or Organization, uh, wrote actually a recent very interesting publication uh, that is uh, pointing out the importance, despite uh, the, the growing interest and capacity of uh, satellite uh, uh, rainfall estimates, uh, it, they stressed on the importance and the value of surface-based observation about weather, of course. Uh, you know, here in the slide, you, you can see how much localized can be rainfall in uh, the location we are working on. So having specific uh, surface-based observation network at community level can give really a big added value. Uh, Another point we are implementing in the project is a, a people-centered early warning system, or at least we are taking uh, ideas from there. And uh, actually, this is empowering individuals and communities to act in a timely and appropriate manner to reduce the possibility of impacts, let's say, to health, uh, with particular attention to disaster risk knowledge based on systematic collection of data, uh, detection and monitoring analysis and forecasting of the data, uh, and especially of the hazards and their consequences. And then another very, very much, very important point that we have very strong in the project is the dissemination and communication. Um, the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction 2015-2030, if we focus on priority number one, which is understanding risk, 
promote the collection analysis management and the use of relevant data. So this is really what we do and what we implemented in the project, uh, taking into account the needs of the different categories of users. Um, moreover, update, disseminate, location-based, so geotagged disaster risk information is a key. And the final point we implemented and we, we really uh, stressed within the project is the integration of traditional uh, indigenous local knowledge together with the science so that one can complement the other. And this is made through, both uh, through training, uh, participatory interpretation and uh, measurement of uh, scientific uh, parameters. So if we focus on the project area and we remember what I said about the uh, importance of surface-based observation, weather observation, let's say in this case, uh, here we have the project area. Uh, we are working mainly with the eight health facilities distributed around the area. And where, where, is, where are the closer uh, meteorological stations? The closer meteorological stations actually, sorry, are, uh, let's say the closest one is in Marsabit, 150 kilometers distance from Nortor, which is really a lot in a place where uh, rainfall are very, very much localized. And the other one working in the area are at about 220 kilometer or 165 kilometers. So there was really a need to install uh, ground-based observation able to monitor and to, to do a weather surveillance at a very local level. Uh, that's why we were able to install one in each health facility. Uh, if we focus on hazard and impacts, uh, in this area we can have many hazard, many, many impacts, and uh, being able to geotag uh, hazard and positive or negative impacts to record them and transform them into usable information that is that it's uh, uh, disseminated it's a key to uh, support preventive actions and advocacy uh, advocacy activities so okay a final point i, I spoke about people centered early warning system we have mainly two approaches uh, the first one uh, called uh, uh, last mile approach is the one mainly based on scientific information uh, and it's involving the people the final users the communities just in the last part of receiving the information and using this information we didn't use this approach actually we used the uh, uh, the approach of having manual weather observation, so not automatic one just uh, sending information, but manual weather observation, which are engaging the people, engaging the community, involving them since the beginning of installing the instrument, understanding why they are measuring uh, rainfall temperature and co connecting it with the impacts on health and this is called the first mile approach or uh, people centered so how we did it uh, methodology let's say we trained uh, community based observers in observing measuring so measuring is very important because only reliable measurements are useful not just collecting data, but really being able to get accurate measurement at local level about the weather parameters such as the rainfall and temperature, recording them. So not just keeping this information in the memory of some elders, recording them on a digital format and sharing and interpreting this information to actually strengthen local knowledge and traditional practices. So we made some trainings, we developed a, a mobile application to 
collect the data, but actually the system is also compatible with the ODK or other open source uh, uh, technologies. And then uh, you will see we plotted the data, we produce uh, some uh, analysis that are regularly interpreted and analyzed at community level. This is a little bit the flow, how the system works. So how we transform data into actions. Uh, first of all, we have, as I said, community-based uh, weather stations uh, measuring rainfall, ma uh, daily rainfall, daily accumulation of rainfall, maximum and minimum temperature. Uh, the data are read on a daily basis, uh, registered, recorded in a paper-based form, but also in a mobile application. So that uh, th this can be done all without internet connection. Once internet connection is available, the data are sent to a cloud database. So this can create the, the, the database, the history of weather parameter together with hazard and impacts. And uh, this data, this information can be immediately shared with uh, all the interested and relevant stakeholders as daily value of temperature, or rainfall or as uh, automatic bulletin that are generated after the discussion with the stakeholders. Here, for example, you see the monthly report for December 2019, uh, giving the summary of uh, rainfall, number of rainy days. OK, I mean, many information can be included, hazard impacts and so on. Additional information or, yeah, I mean, what we do is transform data into information. So additional information can be generated like this one, the overlay, for example, of anomaly of rainfall taken from satellite, derived from satellite, superposed, overlaid to the one measured and calculated at ground-based weather observation level. So. Well, I will show some of other products, but this is a bit the flow. Measuring, collecting, recording, and generating information that is uh, shared among different stakeholders at different level using different uh, tools. Here you have an overview of some of the products that are generated. We have also included the state of the vegetation, for example. We have included some table. All of the, uh, this kind of products were really discussed and agreed uh, with, with the stakeholders. So it's not just coming from us, then the technology is just a tool to produce them and disseminate them. Uh, and also I would like to, to stress on the point that uh, the, the good quality of the data measured at community level uh, build the, 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 the relevance, let's say, of this information. If we would not have good quality data measured at the community level, we will have uh, information, but maybe not really, really useful. Uh, the, the, our system is a content management system called the tree map. Uh, it's stable, flexible, and scalable. Uh, it is able to effectively store, manage, and analyze several, very many, many type of geotagged uh, data collected on the ground. It is compatible, as I said before, with existing open source uh, uh, technology for data collection. With uh, It's also compatible with standard weather data uh, coming from satellite, uh, weather prediction model, but also, I mean, uh, um, vegetation and DVI and whatever, any kind of data can be overlaid and integrated. But I would like to say not just the technology is uh, uh, the key, is the team behind uh, that it's really working hard to bridge uh, science and technology with the real needs of non-technical users uh, operating on the ground. So to produce together with them tailored feedback tools that are meaningful that can be really used for preparedness and response. 
Uh, here is a bit uh, the, the, the picture of community-based observers. Uh, they are located at each health facility. And as you can see, they use technology, but they also uh, produce uh, several kind of maps and graphs uh, also on a paper-based format so that uh, the information can be mm, easily accessible to everyone. And I would like also to say that they are a bit the link uh, and the leader of the data interpretation. So they are leading this discussion when they bring the data, when the elders bring their local knowledge, traditional knowledge, and then assessment of the past month, past season is done, uh, going also behind in the history of the data and of the memory of the people. So this is a little bit how the non-technological um, uh, part is, is working thanks to the use of the technology as well. Uh, here you have an image of uh, the most complex, most high level uh, web uh, application. Uh, this is used by, let's say, advanced users or at institutional level uh, to manage the data that are uh, collected to clean them, to query them, and to do high level, let's say, operations. Uh, many data have been collected since the beginning of the data collection about daily rainfall and temperature hazard and good bad impacts. You can see that you can uh, check also from the platform uh, any information about picture, audio, history of the data, and so on. Uh, we have information uh, also about mass migration, celebration, uh, some very key uh, event that happens and have impact on uh, animal and uh, human or environmental health. And we are also making surveillance about pasture and water resources. I mean, we, uh, the, the, the community weather observers are uh, doing this, uh, this job together with the staff of the, of the project. Uh, what about uh, uh, the sharing of the information? Sharing of the information can be done uh, in real time uh, concerning, for example, here, uh, mass movement of livestock uh, with the same kind of information. Of course, the date is there, uh, the data uh, a collector who collected is there, and this kind of information can be also retrieved uh, afterwards. Here you have another example with a picture of uh, uh, livestock disease incidents. Uh, some feedback from the uh, observers, community observers. Uh, actually, they are happy because the prompt feedback helps community making decisions. Uh, the system um, allowed to uh, report some cases of outbreak and to trigger uh, response in some cases. Uh, the same was very important in the cases to share information about cases of rabies out outbreak and also this triggered a quick response. So you can understand a little bit the, 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 the power of this uh, information. The data which are collected, weather, weather data, are integrated into the NDMA drought early warning bulletin since uh, uh, October 2019. Actually, NDMA is valuing really a lot the very high detail of, of the weather information that the, uh, the, the community observers are able to provide. Otherwise, there would be no other mean to have such a detailed information. So the quality of the data, the timeliness of the data, the engagement of the data collectors uh, is the key to allow this together, of course, the technology. But I would say, again, the human factor is, is really the, the most important uh, thing. And the uh, commitment, engagement, and understanding of the community about this, the importance of collecting this kind of information, recording, using, is, uh, is a key. Uh, I'm slowly going to the end. Uh, here you can see a bit of comparison between a, a scientific uh, uh, tool uh, on the background here, uh, showing the anomaly of rainfall overlaying satellite data to uh, data collected from weather station. This is a kind of map that now community weather observers are able to read 
And then what they do, they are translating it into uh, paper-based forms that they designed, let's say, and that are brought to community leader discussion. So you can see a bit of connection from the more scientific information generated in an automatic way after, of course, discussing it and agreeing it, and the more uh, adapted to, to, to the ground. And uh, I think this is the, 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 the final uh, tool that I'm going to show to you. Uh, in the Gabra community, which is the one of Nortor, uh, the calendar is a very, very special. So it is not following January, February, March month. It's following completely different months. It's following the moon phases. So what we made uh, is this uh, wheel, let's say, able to connect in a very immediate way for, for the people, the uh, traditional Gabra month to the uh, month which are used into institutional weather information. Maybe this is uh, something uh, that is sounding strange, but when also Kenya Meteorological Department or NDMA are sending a bulletin for March, for January, then it's not immediate for uh, people really at community level to understand what, what are we speaking about. We speak about moon and so on and so on. So we uh, created this wheel, which is facilitating a lot of the understanding. And uh, together with this, we include weather information and information recorded at community level about uh, hazard and impacts at local level. Um, so, as I said, participatory interpretation of the data at community level, both scientific and traditional, is the key. Uh, the feedback and the data interpretation has helped members to prepare, uh, for example, to the cold season. Uh, this is really interesting as, as well. We think about drought, we think about the lack of water, but one of the big issues that we understood, that the people understood also, thanks to data collection, is the sudden dropping in temperature when the rainfall is coming. This is producing a uh, mass death of livestock, thanks to the measurement of the data, thanks to the data interpretation. This phenomena has been uh, understood and it's now shared uh, among communities, I mean, among, I would say, mainly uh, community weather observers through the chat when uh, this information is, is recorded. And this can avoid the losing of livestock. Of course, a lot of job is still needed uh, about uh, uh, community engagement and the use of this information, this for sure, because it's really uh, a, a, a lot of job. Um, I would add as well, of course, this information is uh, supporting uh, uh, the, the identification of potential impacts and uh, uh, supporting uh, proper planning. And uh, the Telegram chat we are using uh, to uh, share and automatic, uh, uh, automatically create this kind of reports, uh, although it's not really, uh, it's a bit limited because it's not WhatsApp, is is another technology, but at least it's free to do this kind of, uh, of tools, um, serve some uh, key community actor and really support, uh, uh, in some cases, uh, the planning and decision making. So I'm closing this presentation, just showing this image uh, to show you uh, what can be the impacts of 2019 millimeter of rainfall during October, November in Nortor, and what can be the impacts of just 16 millimeter of rainfall in Nortor, Kenya in the same period. So just to understand how much is important to connect a scientific measurement data with visual interpretation, uh, memory, and recording it to have it as a, a nice to a historical um, feedback, let's say. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Elena, for that presentation. I'm just... Uh... A bit confused about the setup. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I will now open up the floor. I have a number of different questions that I would like to get through, but uh, I have a means to connect with you afterwards and not everyone else does. So uh, let me open the floor. If you'd like to ask a question, then you can either drop that in the chat box or you can raise your hand. 
And Saba, as usual, help me if you say someone raise their hand. Sure, I'll do that. <laughs> so any, uh, any questions from anyone online? Okay, in which case I will get started on my list. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I think it's incredible to see what can be done when you have strong representation from the environmental side in a One Health project. Um, I think many One Health projects, uh, ours included, we all, all sort of struggle to understand how we can most effectively incorporate that. But you've obviously got a very strong, scientifically driven, but community led uh, sort of initiative happening in North Hall, which is exciting. I was curious to know more about the community observers um, and who they are and what's the sort of sustainability model there in terms of, of uh, you know, of, I imagine as a project you're, you're providing training and, and so forth, but I just wanted to understand how do they connect with the system somehow and is that sustainable when the project finishes? Yeah, uh, I can try to reply, but my, I think Mikol then is uh, much, much more expert than me. Uh, so they are community health volunteers and the community disease uh, reporters. So already within the system, le 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 let's say. The, the health system, the, the human health the human system. Health. Yes, okay. both yeah. from uh, uh, human health, community health volunteers and mm -hmm. animal health. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean that, that's why in the one within the one health uh, approach it was important to uh, train them in in monitoring also weather uh, climate and its impacts instead of uh, having different uh, uh, actors let's say mm -hmm. and um, in terms of sustainability let's say I mean both uh, NDMA and uh, KMD are are really interested in having this kind of uh, measurements uh, so this was uh, one uh, one way uh, i would like also to stress we have uh, such kind of projects uh, uh, in kenya as well in other areas and the existing uh, um, network of uh, uh, it's they are called the weather monitors in other areas is made by like, let's say policemen or people who are who are having already a salary but the big issue with them is that they are not really they are just data collectors, let's say. They are not using the data. They are just providing some measurements and that's it. I mean, I hope the quality is good, but until you don't use really them and you, you are not the key actor bringing them to the community, I think the interest uh, is, uh, is much less. Um, so I don't know, Mikol, if you want to add something. Because... Uh, yes, I just wanted to, to, to complement what you just said, uh, uh, saying that, uh, uh, I mean, both CHV and CDR are part of the system. Uh, the difference is that uh, in Kenya, CHV uh, are part of the community health strategy supported by the Ministry of Health. That means mm -hmm. that uh, economically speaking, uh, they should uh, receive uh, a monthly stipend by the government. Okay. Uh, as often happens, especially in vulnerable areas, rural areas, these figures are supported then by NGOs. So in this case, uh, uh, the project supported the stipend. But mm -hmm. we are now in a phase that we call exit strategy because the project is ending in, in, uh, in July 2021. And we have already agreement with the MOH that these people will finally be integrated into uh, the system, even financially speaking. Okay. CDR are more different, uh, are different, sorry, because uh, uh, they are- Can, can you just spell out the acronym, CDR? CDR is Community CDI. Disease Reporter. Okay. Uh, some years back, now I don't know- Just somehow different. Anyone, <laughs> I, I don't know if there is anyone from Kenya that can support me, but some years back uh, in Kenya, there was uh, uh, the, the cows, the, the chows, the community mm -hmm. health animal workers that were also entitled to do treatment and, and any kind of issues. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there was a big issue uh, at, at Ministry of Animal and Livestock uh, in, in Kenya, agriculture and livestock, sorry. And uh, uh, they stopped this cadre and they introduced these uh, uh, community mm -hmm. disease reporter, which are not entitled to, to provide any treatment to animals. 
uh, but they should just uh, uh, support the surveillance of animal yeah. diseases at community okay. level. So they actually they don't receive any support by the government, and so it was the the project that provided them with some allowance or monthly allowance or monthly stipend. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we are uh, as Elena was saying, we are really advocating with the min with the line minister to make sure that these people remain somehow in the system, either mm -hmm. through the support of uh, the hill, for example but also through the collaboration with other NGOs, because these are figure, a community a frontline service provider that anyway are involved in many projects. So, uh, and through our project, through the, the 1L project, they really gain skills and competence that it would be a pity to, to just leave them. I mean, mm -hmm. not to support them anymore. So we are trying to integrate them as much as possible and advocating for the government to for them to be recognized also financially. But yeah, for sure. the animal health, uh, animal health uh, perspective is more difficult to be honest, because mm -hmm. the, as often happen, the animal health department is much less developed, especially in these rural areas and very mm -hmm. remote areas. Okay, great. Um, I Sorry, guess, yeah, maybe I can add just a small comment uh, that um, the, what, what the project and this approach generated is also an increased interest for institutional weather forecast. So before uh, the, the, the community observers had this knowledge and received this training, it was just, ah, no, official forecasts are not working and so on. But now they understand mm -hmm. more about the measurements, about the uncertainty, about the science. So what is very good, they are much more able and eager to to ask what the what the official information are saying and then they are not angry that it's not true you understand that they have much more more knowledge i would say so it's a great uh, point mm -hmm. okay we've got a couple of questions i can see brian has his hand up but there was also kabadu's question in the chat box kabadu do you want to unmute yourself and quickly ask that or Yes, please, yeah. Um, thank you, Siobhan. Elena, thank you for the very good presentation. I, I really like it. Um, I have very, uh, my question is, uh, I mean, in, here in Northern Kenya and also in Ethiopia, there has been a pilot program, I mean, tested also in many different parts of the world. And so as you were presenting, I mean, uh, I was thinking that we always struggle with one fact that these in livestock insurance programs always suffer uh, from one thing, that when premiums are, are paid out to pastoralists, they see their drought cases based on the index information. I mean, to protect their core breed, um, they have the money, but they don't have services on the ground to buy the livestock feed and the livestock health or water for that matter. So we always, as practitioners, think that how can we really correlate uh, the, the service delivery, uh, these rural marginalized hard to reach areas with the information, the scientific information, uh, the satellite um, uh, based um, information that we have. So I was thinking if there is any potential link with, with, uh, with uh, index based livestock insurance and your, your research or, or your, your project. That, that was my, my question. Thank you, Siobhan, and uh, over to you. Thank you very much uh, <clears throat> for the question. So the, the NDVI is, uh, is of course um, already integrated in, in the system. What can be, I, I mean, at least our purpose was to um, increase the accuracy of NDVI got by satellite through uh, collection of information at local level. Actually, there is in the presentation was one slide uh, uh, showing this because we know very well that the NDVI uh, collected, uh, I mean, estimated by satellite is really valuable information at the uh, regional scale, let's say, or I mean, uh, but at very local scale, just uh, uh, ground based observation are, are, are 
accurate, let's say. So, I mean, from a technological point of view, there is uh, no issue in uh, integrating uh, different parameters. The big added value of the system we created is uh, related to the uh, ability of uh, validating maybe also this kind of information or integrating or validating this kind of satellite-based information through uh, information got on the ground and uh, associating it to the real impacts because actually what we really uh, engage people in collecting is information about impact so then uh, if the system is properly working as for system i mean also the discussion of this uh, data of this information uh, you are able in specific uh, conditions similar to let's say two years ago or three years ago to uh, be prepared about the potential impacts which is a, potential impacts at local scale, not, not really just as a Mars a bit coming. Uh, so, I mean, this is the, 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 the added value. But then about the possibility of integrating data or information coming from other system, this is really the flexibility of the content management system we created is exactly uh, based on, on the knowledge that that there is the need of uh, integrating uh, many many data many information coming from uh, other sources um, just as a final point uh, um, we prefer to integrate a little number of parameters and to test if it is understood and used on on the ground before uh, putting many parameters together and generating this index uh, that that are for sure again very useful as an institutional level or as a regional level but once you really want to go at community level maybe the the index is a bit hard to to use and and understand let's say so i think we can give a lot of added value also to this uh, bigger and more uh, let's say regional system by providing uh, knowledge, information, facts, scientific evidence on the ground. So this is a bit the, the goal. Okay, thank you. Um, Brian, I think, I'm not sure if you're going to go back to the community observer angle or would you like to unmute and ask your question? And there's also a, a question in the drop box, in the chat box by Lisa. Uh, thank you, Siobhan, and thank you very much. Elena, for your for your um, for lovely lovely talk, I guess my question is: you, you, Siobhan said you praise the uh, the environmental side within the One Health, uh, and while I totally endorse that, what I what I haven't seen is the, uh, the, the so that this is the environmental components of temperature. Uh, and, 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 and water and the measurements of that. But what I haven't seen is the, the sort of translation into, into water resources for, for, for livestock and, uh, and, and threats in terms of, 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 of movement, in terms of, so it's all right, it's all very well having this wonderful endorsed system with community participating, but the implications of those things and, and the management of those implications in terms of management of access to, 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 to fodder, to pasture or to whatever, and access to water for, uh, for both the human and the livestock population. I haven't seen that. So you've got, the, you've got these sort of databases and, and community great awareness of, of, of weather, if you like, in crude terms, but it's the implications of those in, on, on health of both livestock I haven't seen. Uh, should I, have I missed something? Uh, thank you. Um... I, I had no time to present everything what what we made. So I stressed more on the on this uh, weather. And then when I'm uh, explaining about impacts, maybe the, the, uh, I mean there was a slide uh, uh, showing also which kind of data are collecting. So uh, water resources, state availability and quality are collected on a regular basis uh, on uh, monthly. The resources that are uh, mo uh, monitored uh, were choose in a chosen in a participatory way uh, uh, around the communities. So this is, uh, of, of course, a parameter that, that is uh, monitored uh, on a monthly basis and put in relationship with the, with the weather uh, conditions. Um, it was a bit more complex, let's say. Uh, it, it, 
I mean, in three years uh, to develop such a system and go to the monitoring of uh, weather, health, diseases, water, pasture is a lot, is a lot, is really a lot. So actually um, what we made for water resources, as I said, uh, there are, if I don't remember bad, uh, five key weather resources uh, around the area and uh, water level is measured, pH of the water is measured, uh, the, um, also the, 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 I mean, we had a really big issues related with uh, some wells in El Hadi area where many, many uh, animals uh, died. And thanks to the measurements we made, I mean, before there was no real knowledge if the animals were dying during rain season or during dry season. But actually after the measurements we did, also some measurement and test of the, the water quality uh, was made by institutional level. And actually what was found out is that the level of uh, um, nitrates in the water during dry season was increasing a lot. So also this for community was uh, was a bit high, highlighting the, the 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 main reason why. But I have to admit that to, to I mean to do a proper monitoring that there should be a, a project for the water, a project for the pasture because then doing all together uh, is uh, hard. And as a final point, of course, environmental components is huge. So the the weather, climate, and impacts too water and pasture was uh, our environmental component, let's say. Uh, so then if you're interested more in this, I, I can also provide some uh, additional inf information after that. It seems to me that, I mean, coming from an epidemiology point of view, it's effectively a, a multidisciplinary event-based surveillance system, right? So, so and when you say, you know, you could have different projects doing different components. I mean, that's what we've always done. The point was actually to bring that into an integrated way and therefore generate local knowledge and be able to connect the dots, right? So I think exactly. Brian, so, that perhaps- Yeah, it doesn't the, matter from where the data are coming from. You know, it's not the, the technology for data collection, which is a key. It's the ability to identify, as I said in the very beginning, identify risk indicators, which are yeah. key, transform them into measurable parameters and really have clear as a uh, team, let's say, uh, which indicators on which spatial scale, on which temporal scale, and what we would like to have on a daily basis, on a monthly basis. So all mm -hmm. this kind of job we support, then we can, we are working with any kind of data, you know, also uh, mm -hmm. children's services, for example, which is completely uh, different. Mm -hmm. But the, the complexity is to have um, specific people for water, for pasture, able to uh, have a specific goal, what to do with the data. You know, this, this mm. is uh, often hard. So I can see Nicole placed her hand up and perhaps he wanted to yeah, just build on that. Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to, to complement what Elena was saying. I think that uh, I, I totally agree uh, on what Brian is, is pointed out. And I think that uh, the project uh, started a process and build some uh, excellent and strong capacity and expertise within the community. I have to say that uh, we are used to have three here project, which seems long, but are not, because uh, Elena co can confirm it, but it was a very difficult process to have all these people uh, involved, engaged, trained, supervised. It's not an easy task. So I believe we are really blessed with the, uh, the, the long-term perspective of the HEAL project, because we will uh, build and leverage the results achieved uh, in the area and making sure that more space is given to these environmental components. We, we, we definitely acknowledge as a team that uh, there is a good component on the environment, but is certainly not developed as much as uh, it is for the health, human and animal health. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely room of expansion and improvement and I believe that TREAM has really helped us in 
setting up the pace and, and making sure that then we can continue on that. And adding more time will really give us an opportunity of also of exchange, you know, so, but to, to, to keep on discussing and, uh, and learning from the experiences. Can I just follow that up with a quick question? You can answer yes or no. I saw on one of your slides, it said One Health DSS. So is this part of a demographic and surveillance system, these sites? No, it's a decision support system. Okay, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because that's another area that we've been exploring and sort of trying to embed different types of data collection into health and demographic surveillance sites. So I thought, oh, you're working in that space. Okay, um, so sorry, Lisa had a question just around the RVF and how um, some of this links with early warning systems that FAO and others have, have developed. Lisa, did you want to unmute and quickly ask that question? We have about a minute. Yeah, exactly. So uh, not going to be long. I just wanted to hear from you about Rift Valley fever and if there was any connection. There were outbreaks in 2018 and I think early 2021 in Kenya. I don't think in the area where you work specifically, but just wondering yeah, how you see that uh, connected with more regional modeling and more localized maybe surveillance. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I actually, I, I didn't know uh, the, the, that uh, this uh, system, it's uh, really <laughs> interesting to, to be honest. Um, since I, I would just to say, we are not uh, expert in, uh, in health, you understand? We, we, we support uh, actors, expert in health to uh, uh, make this use, let's say smart use of that. But uh, I mean, we we can have a, a, a look for sure, and DIY is a is a is a key parameter, and the the, the ability to to uh, scale it up uh, thanks to ground observation is uh, is uh, is great. Um, with FAO system, we were working on the other side of low cost monitoring, for example, and uh, it's I mean there are many systems working in this uh, sense. Uh, the, the big issues are about coordination of uh, actions concerning uh, data monitoring so, and the sharing of the data. Because I mean, I, I, I'm sure that FAO system can really benefit about the data that are collected uh, on the ground and, and vice versa, let's say. Uh, so, I mean, uh, it would, it would be really beneficial, and this was discussed a lot also with the NDMA and with this institution and local level, especially for low cost monitoring. But I mean, the, the idea is uh, really similar uh, to have more coordination, more sharing of the data, and to have uh, systems uh, really sharing the data. Then you have the Rift Valley fever specific, and then water specific, and then I don't know, but would be really uh, good. But thank you. I mean, I will have a, a look. It's interesting to know. So Lisa's dropped the link into the chat box if you want yeah, to yeah. just grab that before yeah. we head. <laughs> and actually my fear is that the information stays at the government level and doesn't really go down further. So interesting. But it would be good uh, if this information is accessible in an easy way then to, to bring it to, to the more uh, community level. And on the other hand, if community level is uh, uh, having a knowledge about the existence of scientific data, the, the reading of scientific data, it's, uh, it's also beneficial maybe to, to um, understand or a bit understand this kind of information. But even at the research level, you know, having localized weather related information would help inform the models at the other side. So somehow it's about that connection between those two. And also for um, NASA, NASA, I'm in contact with, I'm in contact with yeah. the NASA GPM. Uh, yeah. So they are really interested in having this information to validate. Okay, well, thank you so much. There's, um, as usual, I feel like these webinars could always go on for much longer because there's so much to talk about. <laughs> um, but thank you, Elena and Miko.